Hello, my name is Ben Egrishi, and I'm going to present our work on two-agent tree evacuation. So this is joint work with some great people, with Henri, Robin, and Roger from ETH. So first of all, what is evacuation? Well, evacuation is a bit like a maze, but the agents here, blue robot and orange robot, they know in advance what the maze looks like. But they have a map of it, so to say. But they don't know where the emergency exit is located. So they still have to potentially explore the whole maze to find this exit. So they might decide to go exploring together, like this, say, here, and then down, etc., until they find the exit, and then they can exit together. Or they might decide to split up, so orange robot explores here and then goes down, whilst to robot explores here and goes further so that they meet up at this location. And then they ask, did you find the exit? No, did you? No, and then they can carry on exploring together. So what has already been done? Well, some guys quite a while ago, they looked at finding an exit along the line. So this case here. And then some other guys later looked at escaping a disk where the agents start in the middle of the circle and the exit is located somewhere along the perimeter and they have to find this exit and evacuate. And then some other guys came along. They looked at escaping a triangle in a square and some others still looked at some things called M-rays. But we like graphs. So we thought it would be much more interesting to look at evacuation of graphs. So that's what this paper is about. And of course, there are related problems on graphs. And in particular, the closest one is probably multiple TSP, where agents together have to visit every node of the graph. However, we note that MTSP, uh, there is no incentive for the agents to stay close together. OK, so we look at general graphs. Uh, we want to look at graphs, but general graphs are difficult. So as a first step, we look at the trees. And so here we have a tree graph with some nodes and some edges. It could be unweighted or it could be weighted. And we have some robots. So here we have a blue robot and an orange robot located at some starting node indicated with blue. So the robots need to find the exit and they both have to read the graph through this node but they do not know where the exit is in advance, so they have to explore the whole graph. And the robots can communicate, but only if they are at the same node. So their objective is to minimize the worst case last exit time. So you could imagine this is a game against an adversary. So the robots plan an exploration and evacuation strategy, and then the adversary places the exit location, uh, exit in the location that is the worst for the robots. So then the robots, they follow their strategy and evacuate the graph, and the time that it takes for them to both evacuate is the evacuation time. So for the simple example, one strategy could be for the robots to simply stay together and explore the graph something like this, down to U, then along to W, down to V, and to X. And this takes a total time of 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. So in the worst case, the exit is at X and the evacuation time will be nine. But of course, this way, the robots do not explore very efficiently. So an alternative strategy might be to split up already at the start. So the blue robot might go down to U and then to X, whereas the orange robot goes down to explore V instead, and then to X. But now, what happens if the exit is actually at U? So the blue robot found it straight away, but they only meet up at W uh, at time one, two, six. And then it takes still an extra additional five time to now go back to the exit at U. So they would exit at time 11. So in this case, in fact, splitting is worse. And we see that there is this trade-off between exploring efficiently in parallel and staying close together. So now what if we equip our robots with global communication? 
So now they can communicate wherever they are in the globe. Moreover, we allow for partially traversing edges. So if a robot uh, is in the middle of traversing an edge, when it finds out there's an exit in the other direction, then it can simply turn around and head straight for the exit. So in this case, uh, staying together still gives the worst evacuation time of nine, nothing changes here. But for splitting up, uh, if the uh, blue robot finds the exit at you, then the orange robot can simply turn around and head straight for the exit and reach it at time three. So U is no longer the worst case for this exploration strategy. So in fact, the worst case will be X or, or B, both leading to an evacuation time of seven. So as you might have expected, global communication is more powerful. And in some cases, it can strictly lead to uh, lower evacuation times than local communication. OK, so now we know, now we know what uh, tree evacuation is. So why is tree evacuation actually an interesting problem? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. So we prefer to answer a different question, namely, why is tree evacuation hard? And here is our formal statement. And the proof is very simple. It's a reduction from the partition problem. So we have a root node here with the uh, robots. And for each element of the partition instance, we add a leaf at distance uh, corresponding to, to the uh, element. So here we have leaves at distance A1, A2, up to A. And you can already see that this looks a lot like partition, since the robots can explore the leaves very efficiently, if and only if there is a solution to the original partition problem. But as a detail, we also have to add an extra edge uh, to a faraway leaf, uh, shown here at distance 2m, to make the reduction work. So this proof is both for the global and for the local communication models. And it can also be easily extended to more agents. OK, so now we know that the problem is NP hard. So we will look for approximation algorithms. And our first question is, can we lower bound the optimum solution? If we can, then we could use this lower bound to prove an approximation ratio for our algorithms. And since we asked this question, the answer is obviously yes. We can lower bound opt. So here is our next lemma. Opt is greater or equal to TSP over two, where TSP is the length of the shortest traversal of the graph, i.e. the solution to the traveling salesman problem. Again, the proof is very intuitive. So let's look at the proof by example. So let's say blue and orange robots take the same exploration strategy as before, like this. Then, well, in fact, uh, any whatever order the robot explore the vertices in, the adversary can choose the last node, so in this case, x, to be the location of the exit. So if, if the adversary chooses this, then what we see is that, in fact, the two agents combined have completed a traversal of the whole graph. So if we add up the blue and the orange paths, then we get a complete traversal of the graph. So this means that the two agents together must complete at least uh, TSP length, and there's two of them, so it takes at least time TSP over two. So what does this mean for trees? Well, for trees, we know that the Scholz traversal is simply uh, any traversal uh, giving a two, uh, a two W, which could be found with DFS, for example, and we divide it by two, we get a low bound W for the tree. So now if we find an algorithm of tree evacuation that requires at most CW time to evacuate the robots, uh, then we know that our algorithm has an approximation ratio of at most C. So first, let's look at algorithms for the global communication setting. So we start with an algorithm called bit bidirectional traversal. So this algorithm is almost self-explanatory. 
So from the name, we take some traversal of the tree, for example, like this. And then the two robots simply go along this traversal in opposite directions. So the blue robot maybe like so, and then the orange robot in the other direction. And then they will meet somewhere in the middle of this traversal, let's say here, at time w. Now, if one of the robots finds the exit before w, then the other robot can simply take the shortest path uh, to, to the exit. Uh, so this is given by the uh, distance between the robots. So let's plot the distance between the robots here. So we know that at time zero, they're in the same location. And the same goes for time w if they continue exploration. So if we have distance along here, and time here, we also know that the uh, robots can distance themselves or near themselves at the rate of at most two units per time. So in fact, with the gradient of two, we get this function. And we know that the distance is always bound by this function. And then if we add to this the time, so if we want to know what t plus the distance dt is bounded by, then we can add to this time. And we see that the worst case will be when uh, t equals to w over 2. So the worst case evacuation time will be 3 w over 2. So we get our 3 over 2 approximation when we combine this with our lower bound. OK, so we saw a 3 over 2 algorithm. But can we do better than this? Well, we will need new lower bound. So here is a new lower bound uh, where L is now the length of the longest path from, from the starting node in the graph. And L2 is the length of the longest side path. Uh, with side path, we mean a path uh, connecting to the longest path uh, at some point. So like we see down here. And let's see another proof by example. So what the lemma basically says is that if we have nodes v1 and v2 here, then the uh, robots, uh, since the exit could be at v, v1, they have to at least um, at least make the path from R to V1. But also, in case the exit is at V2, one of them at least has to check the uh, node V2 along the way. So we would have this, at least this path has to be explored. Uh, so this means that one of the robots uh, reaches the exit earliest at time L plus 2L2, uh, giving our lower bound. So with our brand new lower bound, we can give a brand new 705 algorithm for tree evacuation called bit again. And in fact, we just give a tighter analysis using these two lower bounds. And this analysis turns out also to be tight. So there is, we can here show an example of when the algorithm achieves exactly 7 over 5 um, approximation ratio. So here we see that the optimum algorithm has a very simple strategy. One agent goes uh, to V1, whereas the other agent goes to V2, and they uh, meet finally at U. So if the exit is at U, then they reach it at time 5. Whereas if we use bit, then it takes some, some traversal of the graph. But this traversal could be u, and then v2, and then v1, and back to the start. And now if the agents go along this traversal in opposite directions, then one robot reaches u at time 3, and the other one reaches v2 at time 3. And if the exit is in either of these locations, let's say at u, then the second agent has to now head head all the way back down there, leaving to an exit time of seven. 
So how can we improve this? How can we improve on this 705? Well, the idea is to use this, uh, this example from before and take this longest path that we had and make sure that the agents move along this longest path uh, only once in one direction. So if we go back to it, we could take this longest path and explore first um, anything on this, uh, along the sides of this uh, longest path whilst heading all the way down to you. So this is essentially what we do. So here we have an example graph. We take the longest path from R to VL. And then the robots explore the tree uh, sequentially along this path, making excursions for the side trees. And what we do is we split these side trees down the middle. So one robot explores uh, half of the side trees and the other does the rest of the work. So something like this. So then we prove a 4 or 3 approximation ratio for this. So first of all, we observe that the worst case exit location is at VL. And we leave the justification for this uh, for the paper. But if we know this, then we can calculate the time taken by our algorithm. Uh, because we know that the ro ro blue robot goes like so covering all the blue edges and going down to VL, whereas the orange robot goes like so, covering the orange edges and heading down to VL. And since they do the same amount of work, they will arrive at the same time at VL. And what they will have done is covered every single edge uh, at least twice, but the edges here from P to the longest path uh, they will have covered four times. So what we have is that in total, they have covered two W plus two L. And there's two of them, and they arrive at the same time. So dividing by two, we get that our algorithm is done in W plus L2. And then we take to this uh, low bound, first low bound from before, and the second low bound from before. And then combining these three inequalities, we get this inequality, fourth inequality. And if we check the values, possible values for L and L2, we find that the worst case is when uh, L2 equals a third W, giving an approximation ratio of four over three. So now you're probably thinking, but wait, what about local communication? We haven't heard anything about local communication yet. And we're also coming to the end of this talk. Uh, well, the local communication case, as you might expect, is a little more complicated. So this time the robots actually have to arrange to meet up in order to share information. So if you recall, if you recall the example from the beginning, here if the robots split up and they meet up at this location, then it's already quite late to head all the way back to the exit that might be at you. So what would instead be a good, good meetup location? Where should, where should the robots meet? So we suggest that the, a good, good meeting point would be in the middle. So if we take this uh, generic graph here and choose the middle as a meeting point, um, what, um, this is what we use in our algorithm. So here C is the centroid of the tree. And centroid basically means that each of the subtrees connected to C has at most, has weight at most half of the total weight of the graph. So we see here that the total weight of the graph is nine, with nine edges, and each of these uh, subtrees connected to C has weight three. So we're good. And the advantage of meeting at C is that every node of the graph is a distance at most W over two. So in particular, if either robot finds the exit and then they meet at C, they can still evacuate together in additional time at most W over two. And this means if we're aiming for a three over two approximation ratio, then we can safely assign a budget of W to each robot to explore the subtrees of C before meeting. And taking these budgets into account, the algorithm assigns subtrees to the robots. So the 
blue robot might get these edges, uh, whereas the orange robot gets these uh, edges. And the blue part, let's say it has weight W1, and the orange part has weight W2, and then we have an orange, uh, a green part left over uh, for further exploration. So now we distinguish between two cases. So in one case, if W1 is more or less equal to W2, then in fact, the exploration is already very efficient in parallel. So if we read label C as the new start uh, prime, and we really label the leftover green part as our new graph G prime, and forget about the rest, then we can continue recursively exploring the rest of the graph safely in the knowledge that we've been efficient enough so far. But now if we go back for the second case, so the second case is when W1 is much greater than W2, then uh, the orange robot has still quite a lot of spare time. And it can use this to spare budget. It can use this to explore some of the remaining green part with a subroutine, which we call salsa. And then there's still going to be some green part left over. And the root of this green part we label as a new R prime. And the green part is G prime. And we again show that the exploration so far was efficient enough. And we can recursively apply our algorithm to G prime and R prime. So that's basically our local communication algorithm in a nutshell. And we have a theorem to go along with it, which shows that it gives a 3 over 2 approximation ratio. And now for the proof, uh, we leave this for the paper. OK, so to wrap up, we uh, considered the problem of evacuating two robots uh, from a tree. And through we wanted to minimize the worst case last exit time. And the results we had were that we showed this is empty hard. We then gave a 4 over 3 approximation ratio for the global communication setting and a 3 over 2 approximation ratio <clears throat> for the local communication setting. But we also left a multitude of, <clears throat> of open questions for further research. So one could look now for better approximation algorithms. Can we improve 4 over 3 and 3 over 2? One could also look at uh, different communication models, uh, for example, blackboard communication or communication with a limited radius. Or this paper focuses on trees, but one could also look at other graph classes. One could look at the case with more than two robots or with even with different objectives, for example, minimizing the total exit time of the robots. And one could also look at the stochastic setting, where the each node has some given uh, probability for being the exit. And then we want to minimize the expected last exit time. Or you could even look at a game theoretic scenario where the robots behave selfishly and they do not go out of their way to inform the other robots uh, about the exit location. So again, how would the strategy uh, exploration strategy change in this case. So we leave all of these questions to future work. Thank you very much and see you at Sirocco.